I'm about two weeks away from my hand in date. So all the creativity really should have been done months ago only because creativity I think takes time you can't rush it because if you rush it then you end up either latching onto ideas that you don't really like or the ideas that you come up with are just not that in tune with your overall idea so I think okay so I think creativity takes a few different parts so you have to come up with the idea that you want to follow and then you can brainstorm around that because otherwise i feel like you can go on tangents with different ideas which don't actually fuel your main driving idea from the start 100 percent, 100 percent. so on a side note i get most of my good ideas in bed which can be really detrimental because i stay up ages writing them down um but yeah, I 100% think that sleep is correlated to creativity. If you don't get enough sleep, then you're either too busy thinking about how you haven't had enough sleep to then be creative or your mind can be quite fuzzy. And I think to be creative, one of the fundamental elements is you have to be a bit bored. And I don't think you can be bored if you're sluggish. I mean, you can, but it's not like creative bored. It's like sluggish bored. Um, in terms of exercise, I also think of a lot of my ideas when I'm running because I'm not sort of constantly distracted. And I think it can be easy when you're bored in a room, in a house, you can just go to your phone or go on the computer, or watch TV. But when you want to run, you can't. It's just you and your thoughts. So I think in the same way that exercise helps your creativity just by making you more alert and... Um, just awake also whilst you're doing exercise can be good for creativity because you're actually forced to think about ideas and let them germinate rather than thinking of an idea and then going on your phone before it has time to fully expand yeah i suppose it, you know perhaps it's related to the role of the unconscious that when we're sleeping we perhaps have more access to our unconscious mind and when we are doing an activity like running where we're it's almost like an unconscious process that we're not thinking about where we're running it's you know once we've yeah. we've got into the motion of it and it's still we're on an unconscious drive then we have access to the unconscious then as well i think i read somewhere or heard somewhere that running can be quite med meditative because you're just you, you, your brain goes into it kicks up it like goes it goes goes back a gear almost so you're you're not apart from paying attention to cars and things so you don't get hit you're in a state where you can allow yourself to your mind to wander which is probably very similar to training for a marathon at the moment so I'm running every day and it couldn't have been a better time with my dissertation because it's it's so release it releases you in the same way in the same way that I said that you can think while you're running it also releases you when you get home you're you feel i also think this is a bit of a side note i'm sorry i also feel like productivity engenders productivity so once you've done something which you deem productive like go on a run you're then more likely to come home and do something else productive whereas if you get up late and forget to exercise then you're already in that zone where you're like okay well i haven't really done anything today so i can just get away with not doing anything else <laughs> uh, you're nodding <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i know where you're coming from yes but um, creativity is a process though isn't it so you know there's different stages in that process you know I, I don't believe it's a linear process it's uh, I think of it more of a cyclical process yeah. but there's a process in creativity where we need to do a lot of planning and so for your dissertation you probably spent a lot of time just researching for other people's yeah. ideas yeah. that preparation needed to occur before I, before you could come up, come up with new ideas mm -hmm. of your own. It's, it's bizarre how much of, they say there's no such thing as coming up with an original idea because everything's already been done. However, creativity is all about originality. Um, I think 
you can definitely find because I think yeah a lot of creativity is recycling stuff you've seen or heard maybe linking it together in different ways that no one else have thought has thought of which is still original I think creativity is originality and that's why maybe some people are sort of not scared to be creative but like they think I can't do it because the whole point of creativity that is it it's like it's never been done before so to be creative you have to be original and sort of just not not have to be original but you have to be okay with thinking this hasn't been done before but that's okay because that's what creativity leads you to i don't think they're necessarily bad in that they can actually strengthen the opposition so if someone's always there like jabbing at what like what, what do you mean by this then that can be maybe quite a positive influence on your creativity because you're forced to sort of look at it from ways which you wouldn't otherwise have looked at it which might spark new ideas but I have read somewhere that if you're when you're being creative there's a very important like baby like germination stage where you don't really want to show anyone because there could be a lot of people who play devil's advocate just to play devil's advocate and will make you feel like your idea isn't what like it isn't viable when it could be it just needed you to nurture it a bit longer and be patient with it right i understand what you're saying once an idea can stand on its own two feet then i think i personally would show someone or 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 ask someone's opinion but until then it's wholly your idea because again creativity is all about originality and just because someone else might say oh that wouldn't work that doesn't mean it might not it might not work for them because they can do that but if you can put your time and effort into it then it could work so my it's a positive and a negative thing because my dissertation at the moment i'm writing a play and i know what i want to get out of the play i know what i want the message to be because in my head i can see three women jewish women and they each have a completely different idea about what judaism is about um and i know that's what i want to attack and look at in my play however even though that has that has legs of its own in itself. There are a million other ideas which are sort of like vying and knocking at my door for attention, which I have to say, no, you don't belong in this play. So I think it's also about knowing which ones to let in and which ones to say goodbye to. Yeah. My mum always encouraged me to read, which I think encouraged me to be creative as, a, as like a byproduct. So by reading, I was open to all these different original voices and ways of thinking, and that sort of gave me permission to do the same. So I think you can teach creativity by showing people the end result of creativity, and that can be found in paintings, drawings, buildings, anything. That's why I think it's so important to like go to museums. Because even if you don't find sculptures interesting, just seeing the different types sort of allows you to realise that there are different types of everything. In terms of, yeah, I think, yeah, you're completely right. Critical thinking is taught to sort of get a, an expected result or a certain type of result, where, whereas creativity comes out of love for something and thinking that you can make it into something yourself, which definitely can't be taught. But it can be shown. I think it definitely can be shown. Once you start being creative as well in one part of your life, it will go over into others. Like since writing this dissertation, I could be walking down the street. I was walking past New Street Station like a few weeks ago and I was walking past a, past, past a restaurant and there were like a bunch of homeless people sitting outside, which, which was, I was like, okay, yeah. And then as I walked past, I could see into the restaurant and there was a group of professional looking men having dinner, but they, was, they were literally, it was like there. And then I was thinking that'd be a really cool photo. And then you have ideas about a play which has a group of like bureaucratic men having dinner and the second act is a group of homeless guys. So yeah, I think it's about, you haven't even got to go to like the other side of the world to find inspiration input can come from anywhere is something which can you just have to look at something long enough and then think about what it could be and a lot of um there's a there's a strong association between creativity and the role of the unconscious and some people seem to self-sabotage you know you talk about the homeless people and you know they have access to creativity as much as the professionals that you were comparing them with yeah so what is it you know is it to do with our unconscious is it to do with the way we use our energy is it to do with the way we think what okay. makes the difference 
Yeah, so I actually listened to a TED talk on this. So I have, and this isn't my original idea, but this is something I've heard and I sort of resonated with. There's a TED talk where someone said that the reason why someone who was maybe living in poverty or is homeless is because they're they're not they're not thinking of the long term they're just thinking about their day-to-day -day survival so they haven't really got the energy or mind's power to think to like sort of let their minds wander or like I mean it, they do but they're so caught up in like how are they gonna survive the night how much money are they getting or for, for whatever reason they're just not like being creative and sort of thinking about wider issues of like religion or like why we're here doesn't really it isn't important to them so it, they wouldn't expend like it's not their first port of call like we're people who have like houses and a steady income have the luxury of being able to dedicate themselves to wider issues in the arts whereas i do think when it comes to everyday survival i think your brain goes into like a more short-term loop um th th that's just something i heard and something that i've sort of thought about um, and, I, and i also think it's why i don't know this is getting off topic this is getting onto why homeless people are how they are but yeah that's what i think but people like van gogh was living in poverty too and okay we, we, do, I know that. <laughs> we do have a lot of examples of artists who live in absolute poverty because they're just so focused on their artwork that they're not thinking about these basic oh, then the rent and stuff i don't know then that's so yeah i do, I, yeah maybe that's like they came maybe that's because they became they became poor because like they were rich and they became poor i don't i can't I imagine any of them were poor and then became rich from the arts but maybe they did and if so that would completely fly in the face of what i just said but that's <laughs> that's like what i've always thought the most important thing about creativity is probably just the like willingness to be wrong i know that's so cliche but i think creativity is something I mean, it's everything you've, we've said. It's everything about recycling what you've seen in, in your original voice. Now, I think I think that's my main final point is that everything creative has been has some sort of original element to it. Whether it's like a new building, which is the tallest that they've ever had, or like a book, which is or the first ever non naturalistic play, or something which breaks boundaries. But then, just because, that, in fact, if it hasn't been done before, that's probably a good sign. That's what I would say about creativity.